You're listening to episode 103 of Liz's Healthy Table. Looking for a healthy new way to feed your family without the hassle and hype? Welcome to Liz's Healthy Table, where your host, registered dietitian nutritionist Liz Weiss, serves up fresh and flavorful recipes with a tasty side of science, good nutrition, and fun. Are you and your family ready for some wholesome food that tastes great too? Don't change that dial. Your food adventure starts here. Welcome to the podcast, everyone. On today's show, how to raise a healthy eater. As a mom of two grown boys, I have been in the family food and nutrition trenches for quite some time now. So it's no surprise that I'm often asked by listeners about the how-tos of raising a healthy eater, especially when families are busy, kids are finicky, and unhealthy snack foods are a constant temptation. Well, on today's show, I'll be giving you my top tips for raising healthy eaters, including strategies on how to stock your kitchen as children progress from starting solids to school age. I'm a firm believer that when families make the healthy choice, the easy choice, they set a good example and help to build a foundation for lifelong healthy eating. The journey starts from day one, when we rethink our own food choices, when the babe is still in the belly, and it continues as we transition toddlers to whole foods and beyond. Each step and each bite counts. Each step and each bite is an opportunity to model and encourage healthy eating habits. As a registered dietitian and the host of this podcast, it's my mission to empower you with nourishing recipes that bring adventure and great flavor to your table and to provide strategies for making small, doable changes in the way you grocery shop and how you cook and serve meals and snacks and even dessert to your family. So today, that is what I'll be aiming to do. As you listen, you'll hear about my top seven tips for raising your kids or your grandkids to be healthy eaters. I'll share a few new recipes, including a no sugar added soft and chewy avocado, apple, banana, and oatmeal cookie, which does double duty as either a snack or a dessert. And I'll share a refreshing smoothie made with mango, pineapple, and my favorite fruit in the world, fresh avocados. That brings me to this week's episode, which is sponsored by Fresh Avocados, Love One Today, a leading source of the healthiest reasons and tastiest ways to enjoy fresh avocados, a science-based resource. It provides recipes and articles to help make it easy for consumers and health professionals to learn more about the nutritional benefits of fresh avocados and ways to include them in everyday menus. Okay, a few friendly reminders before we dig into today's topic. If you love the show, tell a friend about it or post a review on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, or wherever you get your podcasts. Follow me on lizishealthytable.com and be sure to check out the show notes from today's show for all the recipes and resources discussed. And follow me on Instagram too. I'm at Liz Weiss. We all want what's best for our kids and good nutrition is certainly one of them. But research tracked by the CDC shows us that about a third of all US children are overweight and that diseases with risk factors linked to poor nutrition like diabetes that were once unique to adults are now impacting our kids. For example, when I first started practicing as a dietitian back in the early 1980s, type 2 diabetes was a condition we saw mainly in adults and rarely in kids or teens, which is why type 2 diabetes has historically been called adult onset diabetes. But today, we are seeing a rise in type 2 diabetes in our nation's youth, sometimes as young as 10. And this is troubling. One of the reasons we're seeing a rise in type 2 diabetes is because of the challenge I just mentioned. A third of American kids are overweight, which increases the risk. That's the bad news. The good news is that we can help to reverse this trend by establishing a home environment where physical activity and healthy eating habits are more the norm. Today, we're going to be talking about promoting health 
and helping prevent chronic disease by improving diet quality early in life when preferences and habits are formed and creative ways to keep nutrition a top priority, even when schedules get hectic. So where do we begin? Well, to make it easy, I've got seven important tips. Here they are. Number one, set the tone for yourself and your family from day one. Number two, take a strategic, thoughtful approach to transitioning infants to solid foods. Number three, focus on fruits and vegetables. Four, rethink your drink. Five, get creative. Number six, eat and prepare meals together as a family. And seven, don't deny dessert, but do pay attention to making desserts better for you and lower in added sugar. So let's get started. Let's break down these tips. My first tip, set the tone for success from the start. Okay. How do we do this? Well, resetting eating patterns and prioritizing the quality of diet during pregnancy can create, renew, and or strengthen the focus on nutrition for the whole family. What moms-to-be eat plays a crucial role in influencing fetal growth and birth outcomes. For a healthy pregnancy, it's important to eat foods containing folate, A folate deficiency increases the likelihood of having a premature or low birth weight baby. One good source of folate, fresh avocados, plus one serving of avocado, which is one third or 50 grams, contributes six grams of unsaturated fats, which are known to be essential for normal growth and development of the central nervous system and brain. I also reviewed some research over at loveonetoday.com that suggests that eating avocados may support breastfeeding by supporting the production of nutritious breast milk. So even before the baby arrives, whether you are the mom, the dad, or grandparent, you can help set the family up for success by stocking the pantry with healthy, fresh foods like avocados. All right. Tip number two, be thoughtful as you transition to solids. Now, every parent gets excited when their doctor gives them the go-ahead to start on solid foods. We're happy to share all the delicious flavors and textures and aromas that the world has to offer, right? Well, thinking about all the possible food choices to consider at the top of my list to recommend as a first food is fresh avocado. Why is that? Well, there's been a lot of research on this. For starters, it's important to start with solid foods to prevent choking and help develop swallowing abilities. Tip number two, be thoughtful as you transition to solids. Every parent gets excited when their doctor gives them the go ahead to start on solid foods. You know, we're happy to share all the delicious flavors, textures, and aromas that the world has to offer. Thinking about all the possible food choices to consider at the top of my list to recommend as a first food is fresh avocado. Why is that? Well, there's been a lot of research on this. For starters, it's important to start with soft foods to prevent choking and help develop swallowing abilities. Plus avocados are nutrient dense and first foods should meet an infant's or a toddler's high nutritional requirements. And my third point, and this is especially relevant to laying groundwork for a healthy eater, avocados have a neutral flavor. These early bites can influence behavior over time. So to promote a varied diet and help avoid early preferences for sweet foods, the ideal first tastes should be those that are nutritious and have a low to moderate sweet and salty flavor profile. Makes sense, right? So mash or puree those healthy avocados as a first food. They have a mild neutral flavor that's not sweet, bitter, or salty, and it can help to be a gateway to healthy habits for life. Tip number three, focus on fresh fruits and vegetables. Well, let me tell you, nine out of 10 Americans don't eat the recommended number of fruit and vegetable servings each day. If you could only make one change to your family's diet, 
I would steer you in the direction of eating more fruits and veggies. It's not too late to make this a priority and help make sure every bite counts and all forms count fresh, frozen, dried, canned, and 100% fruit or vegetable juice. Now for infants, simple mashups of avocado are a great starting point. As they grow, avocados are so versatile, they can be included in all sorts of meals, snacks, and even dessert to boost the amount of fruit in their diet. Use avocados in dip. Think about guacamole, a dressings, toppings for sandwiches, an avocado toast, and in omelets. Later in the episode, I'll be giving you an avocado and apple cookie recipe that you can make for a snack or dessert, no sugar added. So how can you tempt your kids to eat more produce and also love eating it? Uh, Being a healthy eater means fruits and veggies will be at the center of your child's plate. So here's an idea that worked wonders when my boys were young, and I call it my fruit first strategy. And I always used it at breakfast. So here's how it works. Your kids wake up and they are hungry. So start their morning meal with a fruit or a vegetable or both. Set out some sliced berries, half a banana, a slice of whole wheat toast with some smashed avocado on top or a smoothie. Uh, Make pumpkin pancakes on the weekend when you've got more time. I've got an awesome recipe on my blog, so look for it in the show notes. I'll give you a link. Um, Or try a green smoothie with baby spinach or kale leaves added. The more color you include in your child's day, the better. Think about eating the rainbow. You'll feel great knowing that your kids ate some fruits and veggies before they ran out the door to catch the school bus. Tip number four, rethink your drink to reduce the added sugar in your family's diet. Almost half of the added sugar in our diets comes from drinks, things like soft drinks, fruit drinks, energy and sports drinks, and other sweetened beverages. To rethink your drink, start by drinking more water. Water has zero grams of added sugar. While a 20 ounce sports drink, for example, can have over eight teaspoons of added sugar. But get this, a soft drink of the same size can have 16 teaspoons of added sugar and a juice drink like lemonade can have over 14 teaspoons. So water is your best bet. To liven it up, you can add a few fresh mint leaves and a few slices of citrus, uh, orange, lemon, or lime. Or you can serve sparkling water or seltzer to kind of fun things up. What about smoothies? Where do they fit into all this? Well, as you know, I am a huge smoothie fan. So I was excited to discover this recipe for an avocado and mango Kickstarter smoothie over on loveonetoday.com that I wish I knew about when my boys were still living at home. And you know, the next time they come to visit, I am definitely going to make it. So this recipe serves two. It's easy to make. It calls for one fresh, ripe avocado that you cut in half and you pit, peel, and dice. Um, Also one large, ripe, fresh mango or a cup of frozen mango, one cup of fresh or frozen diced pineapple, a few tablespoons of pineapple juice, a cup of almond milk, and one cup of ice. Blend it up, serve with a straw. Oh, yum. Amazing. I love all the fruit in this recipe, the pineapple, the mango, and the fresh avocado. Did you know, by the way, that avocados are a fruit? And did you know that they don't contain any sugar? Zero. And did you know that a serving, which is a third of a medium avocado, has three grams of fiber, which makes it a good source. Fiber is filling, it promotes satiety, and it's important for healthy digestion. I did put a link to the avocado and mango smoothie in the show notes, by the way. So if you want to give it a try, check out the show notes. We'll link over to it. Oh, and one more thing. If you're like me and my boys, you adore your smoothies even more when they are cold and frosty. And that's why I'm also a fan of adding frozen fruit to the blender, including avocados. They're actually easy to freeze. Plus freezing is a great way uh, to save. You know, if you have a ripe avocado that you're not ready to eat, have you ever tried it? 
I'll put a link to a how-to video guide in the show notes. But in the meantime, know that all you have to do is slice the avocado in half, peel and pit, and that'll be a ripe avocado, and then dice it or cut it into thin slices and place in a resealable plastic bag. Remove all the air before you close and seal, and then just place it in the freezer. It's best to use within a month. And you know when you're ready to make your smoothie, just put the pieces that were frozen into your blender. I always also recommend adding the liquid part of your smoothie first and then adding the solids. Just makes blending a lot easier. Tip number five, get creative. It can be tough to prepare healthy meals and snacks that appeal to the entire family. But one fun way to do that is to set out to build your own dinners for the whole family with themes like pizza night, taco night, or power bowl night. What you do is you set out a variety of healthy, fresh ingredients, and you give everyone the opportunity to customize to their tastes and their mood. Let me give you an example of what I might do for taco night. Ready? Over at loveonetoday.com, they have a recipe for avocado shrimp tacos that you might want to try. So to make it, you're going to start by setting out corn tortillas, black beans, you can use canned, shrimp for convenience, you can use frozen peeled shrimp, that's either pre-cooked or or that you can thaw and cook, set out fresh cilantro or parsley or mint if you're not a cilantro lover, and a diced avocado. And then you let everyone create their own tacos. You can also include a salsa, guacamole, or plain Greek yogurt for the toppings. Now, the beauty of a build-your-own dinner is that you can also use these same foods to prepare developmentally appropriate meals for infants and toddlers. For infants, you can mash the black beans, you can puree the shrimp, and toddlers can have deconstructed tacos by placing black beans, diced shrimp, and diced avocados right onto their plate. Another way to get creative is to give traditional dishes a little makeover, boost nutrients and classics like mac and cheese with whole grain elbow pasta or a bean or legume-based pasta. You can amp up the veggies a bit by adding some cauliflower rice, uh, and you can add a reduced fat cheese or even creamy avocados to lower the saturated fat, and then serve a big fruit salad or a green salad on the side. Another way to get creative is to give traditional dishes a little makeover. Boost nutrients in classics like mac and cheese by using whole grain elbow pasta or a bean or legume-based pasta. You can amp up the veggies a bit by adding some cauliflower rice. You can use a reduced fat cheese or even creamy avocados to lower the saturated fat and then serve a big fruit salad or a green salad on the side. That is my kind of family food. Tip number six, eat and prepare meals together as a family. Gathering around the table is an important part of connecting as a family. And in the last decade, studies have proven what some parents have always suspected. Family dinners support emotional well-being. There are so many benefits, including a link to improving fruit and vegetable consumption. It's one thing to recommend eating meals together as a family, but how do you do it when everyone is running in a million directions or when the dynamic at the table is not a positive one? And by that, I mean that you're dealing with distractions like a fussy baby, a sibling rivalry, picky eating, or everyone is on their cell phones. Well, I've got a few ideas up my sleeve that have worked for my family over the years and can work wonders when it comes to raising healthy eaters. If you're busy and you feel like you don't have time to make meals, let alone eat together, turn to meal planning. Now, not everyone was born with the organized gene, but planning meals ahead of time can prevent the last minute panic at 5 p.m. when kids are famished and parents haven't thought about dinner yet. You can use a seven-day meal planner to plot out meals for the week and my supermarket shopping list so the pantry is well-stocked throughout the week. Consider doing all the grocery shopping on a Saturday or a Sunday morning before the market gets really busy, and then spend a weekend afternoon prepping ingredients for your busy week ahead. 
And if picky eaters are a problem, serve food family style versus pre-plating. Um, serving a variety of healthful and flavorful foods in large bowls and on platters, that's family style, gives everyone in the family an opportunity to serve themselves and empowers children to choose foods that appeal to their taste buds and their appetites. And it's also fun for kids to follow the lead of adults and older siblings by serving themselves. So in other words, it provides an opportunity for adults and older siblings to role model good eating habits. Pre-plating, on the other hand, tells a child what and how much they should eat versus trusting children to listen to their own bodies. So let me give you a few new ideas for turning picky eaters into power eaters. We, we often hear parents say things like, my child doesn't like fruits and vegetables. He's picky. Well, I disagree because when I ask parents to list the fruits and vegetables that their kids will eat, I often hear things like carrots, green beans, strawberries, blueberries, pineapple, and anything dipped in guacamole. Wow, is what I say. That is a great start. So praise your child for eating any fruit or veggie, and then use those favorites as a gateway to trying even more produce. For example, if your child loves baked corn chips dipped in guacamole, introduce a cucumber wheel or a bell pepper strip alongside those chips. The familiarity of the chips and the guacamole may just encourage them to try something new. One fellow mom recently told me, she said, when we try a new food or recipe, I always have other dishes alongside it that are familiar and well-liked. And that way the kids don't feel desperate or pushed into eating the new food, but they typically will try it and they will like it just fine. So include your kids in every aspect of meal prep and include your kids in every aspect of meal prep from meal planning and grocery shopping to helping you cook and clean children, even toddlers become more invested in trying new foods when they've been a part of the process. Plus cooking is creative. It's like an art project. And I don't know too many kids who would say no to an art project. Baking is also popular with kids, but as you strive to raise a healthy eater, include kids in fruit and veggie food prep as well, not just the baking. For example, depending on your child's age, they can slice strawberries with a plastic knife. They can mash avocados for guacamole. They can rip lettuce leaves or even massage olive oil into kale leaves for a salad. They can help you make a smoothie by adding ingredients to the blender and then pressing the on button or shaking a salad dressing in a plastic container with a very tight fitting lid or shaking a salad dressing in a plastic container with a tight fitting lid. The opportunities are endless. If you do have a finicky eater at your table, change up the way you prepare your usual foods. You know, if you typically bake your sweet potatoes, try dicing and roasting instead, or making homemade sweet potato fries, baked of course, or mashing them. You know, changing things up is often all it takes to get your kids excited about trying something new or, or going back to an old favorite. And finally, play with your food. In my house, we eat asparagus with our fingers and no utensils because Miss Manners says it's okay to do that. My boys also loved making guacamole all by themselves when they were young. Tip number seven, don't deny dessert, but do pay attention to making them better for you and lower in added sugar. Now, the most recent 2020-2025 Dietary Guidelines for Americans recommends limiting calories from added sugars to no more than 10% each day for ages two and older, and to avoid added sugars for infants and toddlers. Now, as a health professional, let me tell you, it's significant that this is the first time the dietary guidelines provide guidance by life stage. This really underscores how science keeps informing us more and more about the changing nutritional needs of the body at every chapter of life. 
As you strive to establish healthy eating habits in your household and raise a healthy eater, the problem with eating and drinking too many foods and beverages with added sugars is that the added sugar can add lots of empty calories, but no essential nutrients to the diet. Sugary drinks, snacks, and desserts, they displace other nourishing foods in the diet. Eating a giant piece of pie for dessert or even at snack time can displace a beautiful bowl of fresh fruit. A drinking a regular soft drink can displace a homemade smoothie made with calcium-rich milk, yogurt, and fresh fruit. So how do you strike a balance with dessert? Do you deny it or do you make it carte blanche? If you deny it, your kids are going to crave it. If you make it carte blanche, your children may never learn how to make healthy choices on their own. So to strike a balance, when my boys were young, I tried to focus more on the main meal every night versus dessert. But when I did offer dessert, I kept portions small and I reimagined dessert entirely. A big bowl of strawberries with a drizzle of dark chocolate sauce can be dessert. A tiny scoop of frozen yogurt can be dessert topped with berries, chopped nuts, and a few mini chocolate chips. A homemade cookie made with half the sugar originally called for in the recipe, that can be dessert. Don't be afraid to cut the added sugar, by the way, in a recipe. Your dessert will be less sweet, but it still will be sweet. Now I've got a recipe for you from loveonetoday.com for a no sugar added, soft and chewy, avocado, apple, banana, and oatmeal cookie that is perfect for dessert or a snack, and it's ready in 20 minutes. This recipe is ideal for toddlers and kids, and I will provide a link to the recipe in the show notes. So be sure to check it out. You don't need to get out your pens or your pencils. I've got a recipe for you from loveonetoday.com for a no sugar added soft and chewy avocado, apple, banana, and oatmeal cookie that is perfect for dessert or a snack. And it's ready in 20 minutes. This recipe is ideal for toddlers and kids and I'll provide a link to the recipe in the show notes. So be sure to check it out. Here's a recipe that makes 16 bite-sized tasty treats. Here's what you're going to need. You'll need a cup of old-fashioned oats, half a cup of whole wheat flour, plus two tablespoons, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and a half teaspoon of baking soda, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. You'll also need half a ripe fresh avocado, cut in half, pitted and peeled, You'll need half a cup of mashed ripe banana, and that's from one and a half medium bananas. You'll also need a large egg beaten and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And finally, two thirds of a cup of finely chopped, peeled, sweet red apple, um, such as Gala, Fuji, or Honeycrisp. So to make the recipe, you're going to preheat the oven to 350. Uh, You'll line a baking sheet with parchment paper or one of those silicon baking sheets. Just set that aside. And then you're going to get out a bowl and in it, you will place the oats, flour, cinnamon, baking soda, and salt, and just whisk it until it's well combined. And then in a separate bowl, you're going to place the the avocado and you're going to mash it until smooth. Um, You add the banana, the mashed banana, the egg, the vanilla, and you just whisk that until combined and then pour the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients and stir until just combined. And finally, just fold in the chopped apple and then drop the dough onto the prepared baking sheet, just using a spoon and gently flatten until the the dough is round and about a half inch thick, and then bake until slightly brown and firm around the edges. That's 10 to 12 minutes. And then just transfer those cookies to a wire rack and cool them before serving. Uh, Each cookie has 60 calories two grams of fiber, two grams of sugar, which comes from the apple and the banana. So there's no added sugar in this cookie recipe. We used one and a half ripe bananas. Again, that's half a cup mashed and some chopped sweet apple. And we use that instead. That's where we got our sweetness. So, you know, if you have a recipe that calls for added sugar, you've got options for reducing it. You can sometimes substitute in mashed banana, or sometimes I experiment with just cutting down on the sugar by a third to a half. You know, in fact, I recently did that very thing for a fruit crisp recipe. 
It called for a quarter cup sugar in the fruit filling and another quarter cup in the topping. So I cut the sugar in half and, and it was still plenty sweet. In some cases, you can completely remove added sugar, like in this cookie recipe, where again, the, the sweetness comes from the red apple and the ripe banana. By the way, a ripe banana means it should have a few dark spots on it. It's not going to be green, that's for sure. And it should be soft and easy to mash. So if you want to see a video of me making and baking these cookies, I partnered with Fresh Avocados Love One Today to create a fun cooking video demonstrating how to do it. So I'm going to add that video to the show notes so everybody can see it. Calculating added sugar is easier thanks to the most recent updated version of the Nutrition Facts panel on packaged food. You know, now you will find total sugar on the label along with added sugar. Now, keep in mind that many sugars are natural. There are natural sugars in fruits and vegetables. There are natural sugars in whole grains and even dairy. Added sugars are just that. They are added to impart sweetness. And they go by a lot of different names, including brown sugar, a corn sweetener, corn syrup, dextrose, fructose, glucose, high fructose corn syrup, malt syrup, maltose, molasses, raw sugar, sucrose, and turbinado sugar. Wow, that's a lot of other names. Here's an example though of how to read the new label. So I was just at the grocery store and I picked up a box of breakfast cereal. The total sugar on the nutrition facts panel was listed as 15 grams. The added sugars were listed as 10 grams. So that means that out of the 15 grams of sugar in each serving of that cereal, 10 of those grams come from added sugar. Now, a shortcut way to figure out teaspoons is to divide the grams of sugar, in this case, it's 10, by four, because there are four grams of sugar per teaspoon. So 10 divided by four is 2.5. So there are two and a half, 2.5 or two and a half teaspoons of added sugar per serving. That is my kind of math. I hope you have learned a lot from today's podcast. I've given you lots of strategies for how to raise a healthy eater. And I have shared some new ideas for how to incorporate fresh avocados into your family's diet to help everyone in the family, including you, meet your goal of increasing fruit and vegetable intake and minimize added sugar. I'd like to thank Fresh Avocados Love One Today for supporting today's show. Visit their site, loveonetoday.com, for a wide variety of tasty possibilities created by registered dietitians, helpful tips, as well as an easy sign up for the newsletter to get more avocado goodness in your inbox. If you love today's show, tell a friend about it, post a review on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, or wherever you get your podcasts. Check out the show notes for the recipes and the resources discussed. And as always, thanks for listening to Liz's Healthy Table.